Way Home or Face the Fire by Ja, the survival plan for all human plus beings. Chapter 3, The Creation of Human Animals Many of you say, why doesn't God talk to me? He does, to each and every one of you, but you don't listen to him. Your real conscience is you, and what you decide to do in a test. When Satan tempts you, and God tells you, with his good voice, not to do what he says, and that what Satan says is wrong, what you decide to do is your conscience. You are your conscience not the good voice, and you are each independently responsible for your own soul. It doesn't matter what everyone else does. They are not responsible for your soul. You are. They are responsible for theirs, whether they believe it or not. Satan talks to your animal body and has deceived you into thinking that you are no more than a crude, smelly animal with obscene body functions when you are really spirit and only temporarily imprisoned in the crude animal body that you are using at the moment which has to eat, go to the toilet, get old, wrinkled, and die, etc. You seem to want to believe Satan and that you are no better than a smelly animal. You don't seem to want to be divine again. Satan tries to talk you into enjoying what feels good physically to the animal. Example, sex, egotism, materialism, selfishness, competition, superiority, the inflicting of pain, killing, beating, depravity, perversion, etc to try to get you as low as he is so that you will never be able to go home and he is the serpent always eating dust as low as you can get Genesis 3:14. and the I am Yahweh God said unto the serpent because you have done this you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon your belly shall you go and dust shall you eat all the days of your life you being really spirit will never get true and lasting joy or satisfaction from animal pleasures. As nice as they can be, it is self-defeating and a vicious circle. The more you try, the more you feel you need, the worse things become. A perfect example of this is nymphomania, where the subject confuses love with sex, which, being animal, does not bring true satisfaction and spiritual fulfillment. Satan then, from within, deceives them into thinking that if they get enough sex, they will be fulfilled, and they try desperately to get enough sex. Unfortunately, Satan is a liar, and has tricked them once again, and they run around desperately in a vicious circle. The more sex they get, the less fulfilled they feel, so they try even harder and harder, becoming more and more lost, lonely, desperate, and confused. You are not an animal. You are spirit. Animal pleasures alone will never satisfy your souls, your need for spiritual love and fulfillment. God, the source of all spiritual love, God is love, is the answer to every question, problem, or illness in your life. Once you have found God and acknowledge Him as your Father, you automatically have the solution to every problem and illness so long as you have direct contact and do what He tells you to do, His will. Learn to know the difference between real love and animal sex or lust. The reason or logic behind God designing human plus beings is that the soul has to overcome and control the animal. Then it is to give love, spiritual and pure, and affection, human, and to always do for the benefit of everyone. You have to overcome both animal and spiritual selfishness, thereby making it twice as difficult to achieve, and so consequently making the end result twice as effective. This was the demonstration given by Jesus on the cross when he controlled the animal that he was temporarily using, which was made by Mary's body with God's help, and then used it for the benefit of everyone on earth by taking upon himself the sins of the whole world. He controlled it and used it to the extent that he voluntarily suffered the agony of the cross, giving up his human life to show the ultimate example, destroying the self, with perfect control, voluntarily, for the benefit of others. The perfect example of unselfishness, you must learn that degree of control. Two thousand years, and no one understands what the demonstration of the cross really means. The cross is not to be worn around your neck. It is to be worn inside. Hold your arms horizontally, look in the mirror, and you will see your cross. Your cross is your selfishness that you must overcome and destroy. The cross of self-sacrifice that is, 
voluntary destruction of your own selfishness by the giving up of your own human material interests for the benefit of everyone else's spiritual well-being, thereby setting a good example for others to follow by your deeds, not words. I am the way, follow me, which did not mean getting up off your backside and following him down the street. It means that Jesus is the way that you all have to be before you can follow him back to heaven, home. To do that, you must ask yourself 24 hours a day in every situation, what would Jesus do, say, or think in this situation? Then, before doing, saying, or thinking anything, you must wait and listen for and to the good voice. Then, go forwards guided and protected to victory. While in incredible agony, Jesus said, Forgive them, you, all of you, because you do not know what you are doing. The people did not know what they were doing because they were out of control and in Satan's control. And that is the very reason why Jesus came to show the way home in the first place. The people were out of control because they could not control the animals that they were locked inside of and using and had been deceived by Satan who used their religious arrogance against them. God talks to the soul and tells it how to be good. Satan talks to the human animal body that you are using and tries to get it to make you do what is wrong for your soul, the real you. Your soul, you, could easily control the body you are using if it were not for Satan. However, because Satan is more powerful than you are, you alone can never beat him. That is why you need God's help 24 hours a day in direct contact in order to get it so that you can do his will. Once you have God's help, he controls Satan, leaving you free to control your animal and spiritual selves, and things become a lot easier. As you progress, you become more and more dependent on God and become a child of God, adopted, until depending on him becomes second nature, and as he helps you, your faith in and love for him continually increases, and with that, your inner peace. The more progress you make, the happier and more relaxed you become. Real happiness, spiritual joy, and spiritual satisfaction in your own progress and achievement, both physical and spiritual. As you progress, the tests become more and more difficult, so that the more you need God's help, as Satan tries harder and harder to pull you back. Eventually, you actually get to know God as a person, and at that point, it is no longer a belief, but a knowledge and a loving personal relationship of father and child. As you are getting to know God, Satan will try harder and harder to pull you back, so you will also get to know him, how he operates, and just how evil, sick, and insane he really is. From what he does and says to you to try to frighten you or bribe you into stopping. Once you know Satan and exactly how he operates, you will then be able to beat him. You have to know your enemy before you can beat him. The more you get to know God, the more you see how awe-inspiringly wonderful, loving, wise, compassionate, and merciful he is, and the more you wonder how you ever managed to be so blind. You also wonder how you ever managed to live without him and his divine love surrounding and protecting you from all ills. You will then learn to love and enjoy doing his will and receiving reward ever-increasing spiritual and therefore true happiness, joy that no man can take away from you, then you will be so full of love, peace, and joy that you will actually know what it feels like, therefore the true meaning of my cup overflows, runneth over, and fully understand and live Psalms 23. A Psalm of David The I am Yahweh is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the I Am Yahweh forever. 
It is wonderful beyond words to stand or live in the valley of the shadow of death and fear nothing and no one, knowing that as long as you believe, he will protect you. Serenity is not freedom from the storm, but peace brought about by true faith amidst the storm. This kind of peace and joy is not temporary and fleeting like silly human peace and happiness. It is eternal, like your soul, providing you survive the last day, and no one can take it away from you, except you yourself, if you lose your faith. The Torah, the New Testament, and the Quran are not religious books. They are a guide to going home. Many people think that if they live what they consider to be a good life, then God will or should help them. It does not work that way, because only God knows what is good. You are bad, or you would not be here, and so is your judgment. If you do what you think is good, it is usually wrong, not only for yourself, but for those around you, and the good of all. God being unselfish always does what is best for all concerned, and not just for one individual. What you think is good may be good for your body, but not for your soul, which is actually the real you, the only thing of real importance. Why do you think God went to all this trouble to try to save your soul instead of just executing you if you are only a human animal that has to die anyway? The Lord sent you here, and He is the only one who knows exactly what each soul has to learn on an individual basis, and therefore, he is the only one who can teach you. That is why organized religions are totally wrong, because they build a wall between you and God, preventing your direct contact in your free thinking and reasoning process. This is exactly what Satan wants, and that is why he invented organized religions. Never underestimate Satan.